uh, okay, a couple of pictures subchamber. This one here. Okay, it's it's uh, 57 uh, by 27 feet. So this here is about six feet, and it's about seven feet up to here. And there's some fins here and here, and some unusual fins here, and then a little channel here, and this is where the pit is down in here. And now they put rails so they don't fall in. And then this kind of shows the side profile of the fins here. It just kind of shows the face and some fins. This is actually Robert Shock standing. This is one of the fins, and he's standing above the plateau area. He's about I think he's like 6'4", and this is ceiling, so from the plateau, upper plateau, up to the ceiling is quite large. Interesting black residue that is not smoke. Very old, and it's not the color of limestone. It's just above people's hands, and they've been pressure while in the room. And this was Edward Kunkel's original drawing, and he had thought that this was some sort of whirlpool chamber, and uh, he just, he said, wasn't sure what was over here in the fin area. I couldn't figure it out, and he had believed that it made a whirlpool and then it reversed and went sent water back up. Uh, it didn't work. Anyways, interesting point right here. This says northwest corner of the rock cut subterranean chamber in the Great Pyramid of Giza, showing a small recess in the west wall. It's the farthest west of the thing. Also, Stanley looking over the thin ridge of rock which bounds the south side of the narrow stall-like cutting north corner of the chamber. It's a very significant little spot because it actually extends up it goes in. It's the only spot. And on my model, this is model, I added that and that is actually the absolute best place to remove air. It's at the back, up. Okay, this is um, showing basically what I think might have been would be in remove the air and uh, just a, a small like you know some simple valve that just allowed a, whatever gas that accumulated in the room to be go up to the queen's chamber. Okay, now this is the actual complete components of the of the working model. They have retaining wall, water from the Lake Morris gravity feed from the tunnel and just drops down goes into the subchamber here. Uh, dead end shaft over here. Well, if you have a check valve and the check valve is closed, it is a dead end. Okay, just extend down the shaft and uh, notice that little corner and how you, that's how they would have made it. And so that's to the waste valve, to the Nile River. Waste valve is extremely simple. It could have, anybody could have made one. Very, very simple. Actually, uh, let's see here. So that's all that's required for the pump to run. You don't actually even need this air removal line. Um, so what I actually did, I made for the model, this is equivalent of this shaft with the angle. You notice the, it's just a, the way they would have made it. It's just vertical, horizontal, so just a real normal union. It is significant though. It will be significant. Okay. Now, if you look at the model, this is looking into the room. The, the water shoots straight across the room and strikes the, the uh, far wall and wall, water is deflected. It goes perpendicular and so that shows how it hits, actually goes to the output. It's shot towards it plus it's also deflected. Uh, this is kind of showing that that uh, eastern wall. It shows how it goes across, and this is the dead end shaft. It shows basically how it's deflected. There's flow that curls on that wall. There's some that's deflected in the various directions. Uh, some that swings around and drops straight down. And they actually incorporated the the roof of the subchamber as a third dimension of the fluid model. So they were thinking three dimensions, not just a little toilet whirlpool. It's a three dimensional vortex chamber. Creates beautiful vortex. So looking at the face of the fins, this is the simplest diagram possible. It doesn't show most of it, but it shows like part of the flow goes across the face step, 
they have water that comes down through this channel and that redirects the flow in this direction. They have some here, comes down from this wall and curls and then that that redirects the flow across the room. They've got a, a, a mid-level flow that drops down here. They've got a flow that comes here and it actually circles the plateau in this direction and then it goes back to the back of the fans. They have some that comes between this fan and this fan. Two different velocities. This is faster. It's a little bit slower. So actually ink, this is how I determined it. This ink from the entrance room goes across and actually shows it going down on the floor at this level here, dropping into the pit, and then going across here, hitting step phase, and then right there, being redirected by this channel. So it explains the channel. It redirects the fluid flow. This is overhead. Uh, this is a fluid jet going in. You can actually see where it's lighter in this area because there's not ink there. And you, I have a jet here, ink jet here, 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 here. And you actually see that's how it was determined exactly where these go. If you have a, a lower level that comes across here, hits the face, and then curls over here. You have a mid flow, you have an upper flow that uses the ceiling. This uses the ceiling, goes across the room. This uses the ceiling and drops down to the pit. And this goes to the ceiling and, and, and circles and actually presses down lowers the overall level of the jet. True genius. There's ink that shows absolutely there's that channel. It's redirected. That's the sole purpose of that. Every part of this has a function. There's ink coming down down the uh, channel. And it shows it redirecting. As you see some here that it's, it's uh, ink's coming out here and it's coming across. So you have it going in different directions. You have it coming down this way and across. You have it down. Uh, everything is directed. Here, this is that step. You see right here, there's ink here, and there's ink here. You see how it curls around. And I actually did one ink jet here, and at this point, it goes up. But actually, the ink, if you put it here, it goes down. And then here, you can see it goes across the ceiling and drops down, curls, and you have the Two, two channels. This has a, it's coming down this way, starts curling, and this is a little bit faster, higher velocity. This lower, lower velocity also comes down, curls, and creates a curling vortex for the roll layer that shoots out this direction. This is, um, this is the basic, uh, I think, 1800s uh, basic uh, hydraulic ram pump design. This was a cannonball chunk of pipe. Uh, velocity increases enough, it slams shut here, creates pressure spike. They got a little check valve here. High pressure comes in here, and uh, air to cushion it and stabilize things and keep it from blowing up and uh, and just start pump cycle over. That's basically what this is. But you don't need this valve and you don't need an air chamber. So the world's simplest pump, you can remove two parts. Not too bad. This is uh, basically how the waste valve works. This would be on the horizontal valve at Giza. And just sort of explaining that fluid's coming down and, and it starts moving this, this uh, rectangular block in, this, in the shaft and comes over, moves, slams shut. At that point, it creates compression wave, high pressure spike. It's a shock wave, literally shock wave. Um, and that sends a shock wave, high pressure shock wave up the pipe at the speed of sound, speed of sound of water, and uh, and also creates a low, extremely low pressure uh, rarefaction wave, which follows it. It's exact opposite. So that low pressure sucks the valve back open immediately because it's super low pressure. Yeah, super low pressure. Uh, a higher pressure here opens out, and these go send up the the the, the pipe.